Amen. Amen. If you're happy, excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning, can we give God a hand clap of praise today? Oh, come on, you can do better than that. This is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. I want you to do something with me this morning. I want you to say this with me this morning. I, I, on the count of three, I want you to shout, He is risen. Can you do that for me this morning? One, two, three. Now let's give him another hand clap of praise right there. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to ask you to remain standing right where you are. We're doing something different today. Today, what we're going to do today, we're going to have the Lord's Supper on today. Yeah, we're doing something different. So if you did not receive a communion element, I want you to lift your hands high so the ambassadors can serve you and the greeters can serve you. This is a day that we are excited. We remember the price that was paid for each one of us to be here today. We make much of the blood today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he got up, as Pastor Ligon said earlier, we can get up. From anything that's holding you down, anything that had you bound, anything that tried to steal your praise and your worship as you came in today, we bind it in the name of Jesus right now. All of us in here today, we have so much to be thankful for. Hallelujah. God is a good God. What better way to start off your Resurrection Sunday than to have communion with the Lord? He said, do this often in remembrance of me. And so we do it on today. So lift your hands high if you did not receive. I want everyone to participate. Amen. We have a few more to serve. Those of you that are watching at home online, we want to give you an opportunity to join in with us as we partake of communion on today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's bless those communion elements. Now, Father God, we thank you today for this day that you allowed us to see. We ask that you would bless these communion elements now. Use them, transform them that they may be used for your spiritual use on this day. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. On that day that we know as the Last Supper, Jesus sat with his disciples. He took bread after he had blessed it, gave thanks for it, broke it, gave it, said, take, eat, this is my body that shall be broken for you. And they took and they ate together. Like manner after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents the new covenant of my blood that shall be shed for you. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show remembrance of me until I come again. And they took and they drank together. Hallelujah. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Oh God, great God, creator of heaven and earth. Father, we come before you on this Resurrection Sunday, each one of us in our own way, to say thank you. As we look back over this year alone, we have so much to thank you for. We should have been dead sleeping in our grave, but you made death behave, and so we are standing here today, not because we've always gotten it right, but because your grace and mercy has always been with us. Father, we are thankful today because as we stand today, we can remember times when we didn't think we were going to make it. But God, we remember times when we didn't know, Lord God, which way to go. But God, we remember times, Father God, when we've lost loved ones and those close to us and we didn't think we could survive but God and so father we come today as a corporate body to call on your name to tell you thank you today today father God we won't let this day go by without telling you thank you for all that you've done for us thank you for touching us and thank you for healing our bodies and thank you for being a way maker thank you for being a mind regulator thank you Lord God for fixing our heart thank you for mending everything that's broken in our lives. Oh, thank you today. 
Father, this morning we don't just pray for ourselves, but Father, we pray for our brothers and our sisters. We pray for those, Lord God, that are less fortunate than we are. We pray for those that are on our road that may be dealing with situations. Father, we pray for them right now. And we ask to you, Lord God, that you will meet them at their point of need. That, Father God, that you will meet them where they are, but not leave them where they are. That you will bring them up to the place that you died for them to be. Father God, you said, your son said, Lord God, that he came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We decree and declare abundant life over your people now. You died for us to receive it. And Father God, we receive it now in the name of Jesus. So have your way in the midst of this service on today. We lift this service up to you. We give you the praise and glory that's through your name. Join us in this place, Holy Spirit. Move all around this sanctuary. Move in the homes of those that are watching online. And we'll forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due your name. All of the saints of God that agree with this prayer said, Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our King. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, I, I want to take a moment to thank those of you that sent my wife for her birthday. She wants to thank you all for the cards, the text messages, and the gifts. Can we give uh, First Lady a hand of praise today? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. See, in order for you to really appreciate Resurrection Sunday, you have to have been at a point in your life where you've been knocked down. See, if you've never been knocked down, you can't appreciate getting up. So if you've ever been knocked down before, you ought to at least give God a praise for giving you the strength to get back up on your feet. And so, and so I thank you today. I thank God today. I thank him for you being here. I celebrate those that are watching online, wherever you may be today on this Resurrection Sunday. Uh, I want you to get your Bibles, your iPhones, and I want you to join in with us, and I want you to follow with us today. And God has given me a word for you, and if you receive this word, I believe that this word can change your life. Amen? Well, if you have your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads with you, will you just turn with me to the Gospel according to Luke? Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 1. Those of you that may be visiting with us for the first time, we welcome you to New Vision Christian Church. Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 1. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good. Come on, let's sing it one more time. God has smiled on me. He has said. Yes. Oh, God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. Luke 24, Luke 24, beginning at verse 1. If you have it, signify by saying, I got it. Word of the Lord reads, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then 
as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth. They said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Today, family, on this Resurrection Sunday, I've come to remind you his words will never die. I've come to remind you this morning that he is risen. Not only has he risen, but I've come to remind you that he reigns forevermore. I've come to tell somebody this morning that his words are eternal and everlasting. Heaven and earth may pass away, but you need to understand that his words will stand forever. So if God has promised you something, you need to stand on that thing that God has promised you because it will, it shall, it must come to pass because his words will never die. Somebody give God a shout right there. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you today. Spirit of the living God, visit us in this place. We've come today to lift up your name, Father God. We've come today to hear a word from you. Speak to us from the volume of the book. Speak to our hearts and to our minds. Let us not just have church, but let us have an experience with you. Change us from the inside out. When we leave this place today, let us leave, Lord God, as disciples to tell others about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Holy Spirit, have your way amongst your people. We, we give you permission now to move the way you want to move in this service service on today. Speak through my mouth to declare your word to these your people that you may be glorified thereby. It is in Jesus name we pray and all the saints of God said amen. amen. God bless you. You may take your seats. As you take your seats, somebody shout he is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. He did what he said he was going to do. He came the way he said he was going to come. He did the miracles that he said he was going to do. He left the way he said he was going to leave. I wish I had somebody here. And he got up the way he said he was going to get up. And that's good news. Amen. Well, well family, on last week, as Holy Week began, we, we talked about many of the things that happened uh, to Jesus during that week. All of the things that he suffered, the pain and the anguish that he endured on his way to Calvary's cross. It, it was a week that culminated with the death, the burial, and the ultimate resurrection of our Lord and Savior. But what makes us excited this morning is not just what happened 2,000 years ago, but what makes the resurrection cause us to be excited this morning is because of what it means for you and me today. I, I believe that the songwriter Bill and Gloria Gaither said it best when they wrote, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future and life is worth the living because he lives. Can we give God a hand clap of praise right there? Now, it, it would be remiss of me as, 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 as someone called by God to declare his word to tell you about Resurrection Sunday and to shout about Resurrection Sunday without making sure that everyone under the sound of my voice, if you're sitting in this sacred place called sanctuary or watching online, that you understand what today is all about. I would be remiss if we shouted today that he got up, but you leave with no understanding of how we got here. In the beginning, <laughs> When God created Adam, 
Adam enjoyed a personal relationship with God. Just let me tell the story this morning. But when Adam sinned, that personal relationship that he enjoyed with God, the relationship changed. Adam had a relationship with God where God would come and visit with Adam. God would speak to Adam. But when sin entered the picture, the relationship changed and his fellowship with God changed. Because of Adam's sin, man was separated from God. And the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3 around verse 21 that because now they've sinned, it says that God clothed them with tunics of skin which many theologians believe was the first sacrifice to cover sin. This is why whenever you read throughout the Old Testament, you would see that whenever the priest came before God, they had to always come before God with a sacrifice. They would come with sacrifices of animals and pigeons because they could never come before God without there being a sacrifice because it was the sacrifice that covered the sin. So God instructed Moses to build a tabernacle because it would be there in the tabernacle that God would come and his presence would be amongst his people. There in the tabernacle, when Moses built the tabernacle, the tabernacle had an outer court, an inner court, and a holies of holies, or the most holy place. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. Only the high priest could go into the most holy place. There was a veil. There was a veil that, 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 that the priest would go beyond the veil, go into the most holy place. And it is there that the priest would offer up a sacrifice to God for the atonement of the sins of the people. That's why they call it the day of atonement. My Jewish brothers and sisters call it Yom Kippur. It was a day that, that, that the priest would go beyond the veil to offer up a sacrifice to God on behalf of the people. And the priest could only go in there one time a year to offer up this sacrifice. Ah, I wish I had somebody in here. But the sacrifice that the priest would offer was a temporary sacrifice. This is why they had to do it often. It was a temporary sacrifice. But oh, when Jesus came. The reason that we celebrate today is because when Jesus came, he was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the permanent sacrifice. And so now we don't need to sacrifice animals. We don't need to sacrifice pigeons. When Jesus hung on that cross, the Bible says that that veil that I told you about, that the priest would go behind, the Bible says that veil was torn from the top to the bottom. I wish I had somebody in here. The veil was split, giving all of us now access to the most holy of holy. So the reason you ought to be excited this morning is because you don't need a priest to go to God for you. You don't need a preacher to go to God for you. The reason you ought to be excited is because it matters not what you grew up in. You can go to God for yourself. I need somebody to give God a praise today because you have access. You have access for yourself. When Jesus came, he built a bridge between fallen man and a holy God that gives us access. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. So family, I need you to catch this. This is the gospel message that it is through Jesus Christ that our relationship with the Father has been restored. That's why we celebrate. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died 
for you and for me. Let's give God a hand clap of praise right there. So today should cause you to remember and today should cause you to celebrate because no matter where you are in life, no, no matter what you have done, Come here, let me talk to you on this side. Stop letting people run you away from the atoning blood that Christ died to give you. You are never going to please everybody all the time. But that's okay because they didn't die for you. As long as you please the one that gave his life for you, that's all you need to do. So no matter what it is you've lost, you can recover. Somebody say recover. recover. No matter what it is you've lost, you can rebound. Somebody say rebound. rebound. No matter what it is you had to walk away from, I need you to understand that you can regain it. Somebody shout regain. regain. Here it is. And because God's word is the final word, watch this, the enemy wants you to forget it. The enemy wants you to get so wrapped up in what's going on in the world and society and things around you that you forget the only thing that matters. That you forget the only thing that's not going to die. You forget the only thing that's not going to perish. He wants you to get in the rat race of life trying to achieve the American dream. But I've come to tell you that the American dream can't save you. I've come to tell you sitting in the front office in a chair that spins around and around and around, it's a nice little thing to have, but please understand that it cannot save you. You can have money in the bank, shout it what you think. But I need you to understand that all the money in the world can't save you. When you get to your last days, you cannot write a check and get one more week. Come here, let me talk to you. You have to stand on the Word of God. And so, since the enemy understands that it is only the Word of God that can stay with you, that can sustain you, he wants you to forget it. And his strategy is not to cause you to forget instantaneously, but incrementally. He wants you to slowly, day by day, drift away from the Word of God until he gets you out there all by yourself with no word to stand on. I wish I had some help in here today. He wants to get you to drift so far away from God that you find yourself like Samson and wake up one morning realizing that all your power is gone because you have connected to and put your hope in anything and everything but the Word of God. And the thing that you have connected to and put your hope in is actually the thing that's taking your strength. And so here it is. And the enemy want to mess you up. Want to have you running around trying to see what you can get, what you can buy, how you can blow up, what you can dress. And you neglect the Word of God. See, that's, that, that, that's why, come here, I'm, I'm almost where I'm going. That's why when people get up in the morning, the first thing that they think about is not reading a word from God. Oftentimes, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we think about is what we got to do throughout that day. But let me ask you a question. What if the creator of the cosmos decides that last night was your last night? What, 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 what would you do if that important business meeting that you got on Tuesday you don't make? 
when, 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 when you stand before him, he's not going to ask you how many degrees you have attained. When, when you stand before him, he's not going to ask you how much money you made last year. He's not going to ask to see your portfolio. He's going to ask, what did you tell people about my word? And so here it is. Here it is. Here it is, Troy. In, 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 in the text right here, these women, these sisters here, they go down to the tomb the first day of the week. And, and, and when they get to the tomb, they see something. They, they see the tomb is there, Chad, and they see that the stone has been rolled away. But, but when they look inside of the tomb, they don't see Jesus' body. And the Bible says that they were greatly perplexed. And the reason they were greatly perplexed is because they remembered what Jesus said about him dying, but they forgot what he said about him getting up. I wish I had somebody in here. You see, they were hurting so badly. Pain can cause you to forget what you know is true. Did you hear what I said? Sometimes you can go through so much pain until pain will cause you to forget what you thought you knew. See, this is why when people are going through pain and they're dealing with the loss of loved ones or, or, or dealing with a bad diagnosis, they need intercessors. They, they need people to pray for them. Is there anybody in here that knows what it feels like to go through something that hurts you so bad that you can't even pray for yourself? You, you need somebody else to pray for you. And so here it is. Here it is, they, 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 were, they were going through so much pain that they forgot. They forgot the three years and all that they've seen. They, they forgot what they saw him do in Luke chapter 7 verse 12. When a widow from a city called Nan was, was burying her only son. Yeah, and Jesus walked by and she was having a funeral procession for her son, her only son. She already had lost her husband and now she's having a funeral for her only son. And the Bible says that Jesus saw her and had compassion on her, put his hand over the open coffin and the boy set up. They forgot, they forgot, they forgot what they saw in Luke chapter 8, round voice, verse 41, when, 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 when a man by the name of Jairus came to Jesus because his 12-year-old daughter, his only daughter was sick. And he said, Master, would you please come to my house and heal my daughter? This is my only child. This, this is my only daughter. Jesus starts going to his house, but a woman with an issue of blood. I wish I had some Bible readers in here. A woman that had an issue of blood stopped Jesus along the way when Jesus healed her. Then one of the servants of the man came and said, don't bother the master, your daughter is dead. They forgot that Jesus went to a house, went into the room, put everybody out but the mother and the father, touched the little girl by the hand and said to her, little girl, rise. I wish I had somebody. They forgot that the girl sat up in the bed and then Jesus gave instructions, now go and get her something to eat. I wish I had somebody in here. They forgot what happened. They, they, they forgot because they were in so much pain. They forgot what Jesus did in John chapter 11, round verse 38, when their brother Lazarus died. And Jesus showed up four days later and told them, roll the stone away. They rolled the stone away. Jesus stood before the tomb and cried out, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said that Lazarus came forth wrapped in grave clothes. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. I wish I had some Bible readers in here that understand that the same God that did it then is God enough to do it now. I dare you. I dare you to let your mind go back to what he did for you. I dare you, I dare you to let your mind, we don't have to go back five years, go back to January. I dare you to let your mind go back 
when you didn't know how you were going to make it. But God made a way. I dare you. I dare you to let your mind go back when you didn't know how you were going to pay your bills. I dare you to let your mind go back when you thought this sickness was going to be unto death. But Jesus showed up. You see, here it is. I'm almost where I'm going. See, 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 oftentimes, brothers and sisters, we act just like the women in the text. Whenever something dies in our life, we go and get our spices and our embalming oils together because we think that death is stronger than the Word of God. Yeah, we, 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 we like these women we start making preparations because whenever something dies, when, when the marriage dies or, or when, 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 when the pursuit of the job fails, then we go ahead and get our spices and we say a benediction over it because we think that death is stronger than the Word of God. Need I remind you what God said to Ezekiel when he stepped in the valley full of dead bones and he asked Ezekiel a question? Can these bones live? <laughs> Whenever God asks the question, he's not asking it because he needs you to give him the answer. <laughs> let, me just, let me just throw that out there. Can these bones live? Prophesied to these bones, and Ezekiel prophesied to the bones, and the bones came together, bone to bone, sin you to sin you, and they lived again. Need I remind you that when Abraham thought that he and Sarah were too old to have a child because her womb was dead, but God did it anyway? What is it that's so dead in your life that you think even God can't fix it? What is it that's so broken that you don't even think God can mend it back together. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 26, write that down, read it when you get home. Paul calls death, watch this, the last enemy. <laughs> he calls it the last enemy because there is nothing that has not succumbed to death. Humans have to succumb to death. Animals, there, there, there are no animals that has been able to stand against death. Plants and trees have not been able to stand against death. Nothing living has been able to escape the grasp of death. And so when these sisters heard that Jesus was dead, they, they, they forgot all the things that he said to them. And so now they begin to act as if one who has no hope, that they, they forgot what, what, what he had told them he was going to do. They were thinking about how they felt and not about what he said. Come here, let me talk to you. Don't just go by how you feel, but go by what he said. Because nine times out of ten, what you feel and what he said will never match. They were going by how they felt, not what he said. They had to remember, didn't you remember Jesus telling you that if you destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up again? Don't you remember Jesus telling you that as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, so shall the Son of Man be in the belly of the earth for three days? I need about 23 folk to just shout, I'm going to remember what he said. That was cute. That, that was cute right there. But I want you to say it from your gut. I want you to think about what that is the enemy is trying to put on your shoulder. And somebody declare, I'm going to remember what he said. I'm going to remember what he said. Didn't I tell you that this sickness is not till death? Didn't I tell you that where you are this year, you're not going to be there next year? Didn't I tell you that that thing that broke your heart is not going to break your spirit? Didn't, didn't I tell you, didn't I tell you at the beginning of the year that this was going to be your year of expansion? I don't know who I'm talking to in here today, but if God spoke that thing over your life, you got to get ready, 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 get ready because what God spoke over your life must come to pass. So, 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 so here it is. I'm done. I'm done. Right, 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 right here. Picturize this with me. 
These sisters get up and they run down to the tomb. And, and, and the reason that they ran down to the tomb is because they expected Jesus to be in the same place he was the last time they saw him. Let me talk to this side over here. They ran down to the tomb because they expected Jesus not only to be in the same place, but to be in the same condition. <laughs> that he was when they last saw him. And an angel had to come to them and say, why are you looking for him here? He is not here. He has risen as he said. And I've come to tell somebody this morning, there are going to be some people looking for you. Come here, mother. I'm almost where I'm going. There are going to be some folk looking for you. And they're going to expect you to be in the same place that they saw you in the last time. There's some folk that's going to be looking for you. And they're going to think you're going to be in the same condition as you was in the last time. But I've come to tell you that you're going to be able to tell them pain don't live here anymore. Disappointment don't live here anymore. I need somebody to shout, I moved on. Now give God a hand clap of praise right there. Here it is. Here it is. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Somebody shout, I've moved on. Yeah. Yeah. The stuff you used to be able to say to make me cry. I need you to know I cried my last tear yesterday. I moved on. So here it is. Here it is. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 8, it says, The grass wither, the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. I got to read that one more time. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the words of your God stand forever. So if God spoke it over your life, I need you to continue to stand on that word until it comes to pass in your life. And so here it is. I'm done. I'm done. God has sent me on assignment this morning to remind you, not only to remind you of what Jesus did for you, but to also remind you of what Jesus said about you. Don't you know that Jesus said that you, somebody say, you talking about me, you talking about me. Don't you know that Jesus said that you are the light of the world? Don't you know that Jesus said that you, talking about you, brother, that you are the salt of the earth? Somebody say, you talking about me. I've come this morning to tell you that you going to win. I know it's bad English, but it's excellent gospel. I've come this morning to tell you that you are going to survive this thing right here. I've come to tell you this morning that the word that God spoke over your life is still there. It may not look like it, but you're going to survive. It may not feel like it, but you're going to win this too. And so here it is. I'm done, Nicole. Walk, walk with me. I'm done. Jesus' story did not end at the cross. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. Jesus' story did not end at the cross and neither will yours. I want to talk to my young folk real quick. If you're watching online, if you're in here, I want to talk to you real quick. Because the enemy is trying to convince you at a very young age that your life is over. The enemy is trying to convince you at a very young age that you have nothing to live for. I've come to tell you that the devil is a liar.
he's the chief of liars and the devil is looking for somebody he can steal kill and destroy I'm standing here today to tell you it matters not what you have done it matters not where you've been you are still a child of God if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior you can still win you may be burdened today but I'm coming to tell you Palmer you're not gonna be burdened always Y'all help me preach today. it may be tough today but I'm trying to tell you it's not going to be tough forever you will win I need you to say it say I will win I need you to say it again say I will win give God a hand clap of praise right there I want everyone stand I'm done I want everyone stand everyone stand when you truly understand what this resurrection Sunday means you will understand that your fight is fixed I'm trying not to run around this campus I'm trying to get you to see your, I know you're going through stuff I, I, I get it but I need you to understand that your fight is fixed and the only way you don't win is if you don't fight but your fight is fixed and I want to talk to those of you that are standing here and you're suffering in silence because see we think that the absence of pain means the presence of healing let me say that again we think because it don't hurt no more it ain't there no more and that's not true it's gonna lie dormant in there until the enemy feels he can pull it and use it against you until you get that thing all the way out of you so I've come this morning to tell you family the reason we celebrate on this resurrection Sunday got nothing to do with Easter got nothing to do with rabbits and bunny rabbits and new outfits got nothing to do with that that's a trick of the enemy to try to get you to lure you from the word the reason you should be excited for the remaining balance of your life is because Jesus did what he said he was going to do and he said I'm not going to leave you orphans he said I'm going to send a helper to help you brother you're not by yourself sister you're not going through this alone you have help and I want you to understand on this resurrection Sunday that because he got up there's nothing that can hold you down and keep you down you can get up from it I, I want you to lift your hands I want to pray for you right here father I'm praying right now for these your people we are excited today because you got up your son got up Jesus got up he's no longer in the grave we're excited about that but we're excited because of what it means to us too you made promises to us You've spoken a word over our lives and many of us have not walked into it yet but Father God we're believing by faith that the word that you spoke the promise that you made is still there I pray right now for your children today that Father God you will give them the strength that they need to climb the mountains that they have I pray for your people today that no matter what they go through their faith shall not fail that he who has begun a good work in them shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ I decree and declare over every lifted hand in this place today you shall be what God called you to be I decree and declare that your children are going to be all right that your household is going to be all right that you shall not lose your mind that everything that you lost God is going to restore it to you I decree over your life today that because he got up 
that the thing that was holding you down until now has to let you go because the spirit of the living God lives on the inside of you and so we thank you today it's in Jesus name that we pray everybody said amen 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 I need 23 folk to shout he is risen now give God a hand clap of praise right there listen listen if you're standing in this place called sanctuary if you're watching online this is the most important decree that I'm going to make today everything that we just said it was it, it was it, 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 it was the topping to get to this moment this is the most critical moment in any church that is open all over this country it matters not what you hear if you don't move on it it does you no good if you are under the sound of my voice this morning on this resurrection Sunday and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal somebody say personal as your personal Lord and Savior this plea is for you this is not a plea to join the church this is a plea to join the body of Christ if you are not saved if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today is your day to do so he has made it so simple for us he did the hard part he was beaten he was crucified he bled he died he did the hard part all you have to do is believe that's all you have to do all this religion is trying to pull you away from it all he all you gotta do mother all you have to do father is believe that he got up believe that he is the Messiah believe that he's coming back again he came the way he said he was going to come he did what he said he was going to do he died the way he said he was going to die he got up the way he said he was going to get up and he's coming back like he said he's coming back all you gotta do is repeat this prayer after me say father thank you for letting me see another resurrection Sunday this Sunday this day I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ this Sunday this day I believe in my heart that he rose from the dead I also believe that he's coming back again father come into my heart change me from the inside out and for the remainder of my life I want to live it serving you in Jesus name amen if you prayed that prayer come on and give God a hand clap of praise today I want to offer this to you as we prepare to go. Mother, get your pocketbook, grab your keys. Here we go. We're about to leave. But I want to offer this to you. God is doing some great things here at New Vision. Today, really, today marks 14, is it 15 or 14? I think it's 14, 14 years. 14 years. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Fourteen years, Brother Story, God started doing something. And I want to share this with you very quickly because it was, at a, it was at a broken time. It was at a time where we didn't have anything. We didn't know what was going to happen. It was nine of us sitting at the table in my house. We didn't know what God was going to do. All we had was a word. But we moved on the word. And 14 years later, look what God is doing. You're not hearing what I'm saying. So I say this to you. Don't set God's clock by your watch. He may not do it when you think he should do it. But Big Mama say, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. 
And so having said that, I want to offer you, I want to offer you an opportunity to join us. God is doing great things. He's using us to be his feet and his hand here in the earth ramp. We need you. We need you. We need you to help us reach our children. We need you to help you help us reach our schools. We need you to help us visit the jails. We need you to help us go downtown and to feed the homeless. We need you. And so if God is calling you to plant your stake somewhere, if God is calling you to be in a place where the word is going to be preached and you're going to be taught and your gifts are going to be used, I would love to be your pastor. We would love to be your church family because we are doing the things that God has called for us to do. So I'm going to make this appeal, not going to hold you long, but if that's you, if you feel that God is leading you here to this house to connect with us, I want you to meet me right here at this altar. I want you to come. I want you to come and meet me right here. There you go, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. There you go. Come on. Come on. Meet me right here. There you go, my daughter. God bless you. God bless you, man. God bless you. Come on. Somebody ought to give God a hand clap of praise. Bless you, daughter. God bless you. Bless you. Yes, yes, yes. I have a present for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. They're still coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. Come on. Come on. Somebody, let's give God a hand clap of praise all over, all over the building. Hallelujah. Come on. I want y'all to come closer. Come on. Come on. Right here. Right here. Come on. I want you to stretch your hands right here. Hallelujah. If you're online right now, you joined online, come on, I want you to stretch your hands, right? Come on, darling, come on, we wait on you. Come on, baby. Come on, come on, let's come on. Come on, somebody need to give. They still coming. Somebody need to be excited up in here. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, they still coming. We, we, we gonna wait on you. Come on, we gonna wait. We gonna wait, we gonna let God, somebody ought to be excited about what God is doing on this Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want you to know. I want you to know. I want to hold these. We're going to pray for those right here. Uh, I, I, I want you to know. I want you to know. You're home. Let me say that again. I want you to know. You're home. I want you to know that you're in a place where you're going to be loved. I want you to know that you're in a place where you're going to be prayed for. I want you to know that you're in a place where we're going to walk with you. You are a part of our family now. Because we're all seeking the same thing. We're all seeking the same thing. And that's the kingdom of God. And so I want to welcome you here. And I want you to bow your heads. I want to pray with you right here. Father God, I thank you right now. I thank you for these your sons. And I thank you for these your daughters. I thank you, Lord God, that they've stepped out and they said, Father God, I believe, I trust and I believe. I know that there's greater in me. I know that there's more in me. I know that there's an assignment on me. I know that you've called me, you've created me for a time such as this. I know and I believe, Lord God, that you're going to use the giftings that you've placed down on the inside of me. And so I'm taking this step not just for myself, but I'm taking this step for my children and I'm taking this step for my children's children. I, I'm taking this step right now because I believe, I believe by faith that you're going to do some things. I believe by faith, Lord God, that you've called me for a time such as this and you've called me to a place such as this. Father, I submit my gifts to you. And I say, Father, use me for the advancement of your kingdom, for the furtherance of your gospel. And so, Father, I pray that as the under shepherd of this house, that you will show me what I am to do. Show me how I am to lead your people. And Father, we'll forever give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due your name. It's in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Somebody shout amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Listen, I want y'all to follow our ministers. Follow our ministers. We get some information from you. Hallelujah. Okay, praise God. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise all over the building. Lift your hands as I command the blessing over you right where you are. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord our God cause his face to shine upon you. 
May the Lord our God establish you and may he give you peace. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, God bless you. Go and have the best Resurrection Sunday that you've ever had. God bless you. We'll see you next week. God bless you.